Welcome to my fourth video in the When You Dream series. This painting is titled Faith Bear. Today I'll be speaking about understanding the strength of our faith and moving from operating in our faith as simply a comfort to operating in confidence in our faith as when it comes to what we ask of the Lord and how we function in our lives and how we seek understanding of dreams and spiritual warfare. Before I go on and tell the story about this painting and what happened and the inspiration behind it, I wanted to just take a moment and talk about understanding the difference between the things that God does and can do in us and we can do in Him that seem to operate in the supernatural and doing those things in obedience and in accordance with His will and then being careful not to move into what the Bible describes as witchcraft, which is moving into doing things in your own will and desire and function um, with the help of evil spirits. So 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So if you are trying to operate in things, and this is very common, and that's why I just want to talk about this as a quick warning. When God starts moving in your life in a supernatural way, whether it's dreams and visions, or you've received a healing, or anything that is the, in the supernatural realm, something that God did that takes you outside of what, you know, maybe our prescribed little box of normal function of humanity should be, we need to understand and, and be in the Word so that we can truly see what He really meant for us to be. Like We don't even understand fully what life was like in the garden when Adam and Eve were there and what was supposed to be normal humans and that's why when we will weep when we see him when he returns he was, we will know what we're fully supposed to be and we'll weep because we're so far from that and I just want when people do that they tend to want to dive in with both feet into the supernatural and there's a lot of counterfeit out there there's a lot of disguises out there that are just laying traps to take the people that God has called and chosen and to ensnare them in things that are destructive and dangerous so I'm going to get on with the story and we'll touch back on why I wanted to to mention that you need to always be doing things in accordance with the will of the Father, asking Yeshua to be your check and your guide and test everything against Him and against the Word and against learning what His true nature and character are. So this picture is a portrait of my daughter Lily when she was little. She was about four years old when this story happened. We were doing well. I was dreaming a lot at this time. I had had a, a very divine encounter that had really awakened my dream life and I was journaling and <clears throat> receiving so much from the Lord at the time that I was almost overwhelmed. Excuse me. And <clears throat> Because of what I had been through when my daughter woke up screaming from what I perceived was a nightmare, I was very, very concerned for her and my heart was very enlarged just to try to help and save her from what I had endured for so long. I absolutely understood that I had been healed, understood that there could be healing and more understanding and wanted absolutely to have my children walk in that in their youth and not suffer for so long before they came into that healing and that redemption of guarding your dream life and 
having to be a place where you could meet with God and not have it overrun by the darkness. And so she woke up crying and I sat with her and prayed with her and asked her what had happened. She said she had a bad dream and being someone that had actual demonic nightmares that were more on par with horrible horror movies, hearing what she described and the level of fear that it instilled in her was a bit surprising to me. It was um, a very kind of normal dream, but in the dream she was separated from me. In the dream she was, um, something had happened, uh, an, a car accident or something, and then she was placed by some type of officer in black with yellow tape, and she's four years old describing these things to me, yellow tape, so you you know think of a firefighter or a police officer with the yellow reflectors on his coat, put her in a car, and she was just very afraid. She felt safe, and then a man came in the car and spoke with her and helped her feel better. And so I talked with her, you know, I instantly had enough understanding to say, well, the man that was helping you feel better, that was Yeshua or one of his angels who was trying to comfort you and let you know it was okay. But she was so terrified because she simply wanted mommy. And in that moment, she couldn't have me, whatever was going on in the dream. And that's all she kept repeating. I wanted you. I wanted you. And so I prayed with her and put her back to sleep. And But just the level of her, the tenor in her voice and the, the fear that she was expressing, I very greatly wanted understanding to help her navigate through this so that she wouldn't get locked into that as I had been as a child. And I didn't do that as a child and I didn't know how to navigate her through that. I had come to this when I was an adult, when I was 18, and my parents had not been functional in that. And I, as a parent, very much wanted to be. So I went out to the living room and I sat in the chair and I began to pray, and I don't remember every word. I do remember that in my spirit, in my heart, it was patterned very much after Solomon's prayer where he is asking for wisdom to govern the people because they're so great a people, and, and I was very much praying like that. You've given me these children. They're yours. I want to do right by them. I want to raise them up before you. I need your wisdom. I need you to help me, and as the Holy Spirit was stirring in my heart and I was praying, I realized that he was talking to me a lot in dreams and he was showing me things, um, even intercessory about other people at times. Things were happening in my dreams that were, you know, more, more than just normal experiences. They were very spiritual in nature and they were very um, divine encounters and things. And so I asked it just kind of bubbled out of me. I didn't really even think about it. I just asked that because he was showing me so much in dreams, if he could show me a dream, because I had been in Lily's dream, show me the dream from my perspective so that I could help her and know what was going on that she couldn't see. And when I was done praying, I felt better. I had given it to the Lord and I I had a bit of peace about it and I went to bed and I was very surprised when I woke up that I had dreamt and he had answered my prayer and done exactly what I had asked. And this is where I want, you know, to talk about understanding the difference between I didn't just project my spirit in the dream realm and dream walk into her dream. I asked of the father to show me. And he did. And that's the difference between operating in rebellion in your own power and operating in obedience in humility to his will. There's a big difference between saying, I know this is possible and I can just do it. This is what Adam and Eve did in the garden. You can go ahead and eat that fruit and be like God. You can operate like this. And saying, no, I'm going to walk with the Father. And when he says, I can do this then I can do this. And so that's what I had done, not really even understanding that fully at the time, just wanting, and, and, my, and I believe because my heart was for my daughter, that God answered my prayer. And 
I dreamt, and so I dreamt of power lines and a utility truck that had an accident and went off the road and the power lines were down and people uh, were in this icy creek because uh, another vehicle had gone off into the water. And so I went and I was helping people come out of the water and get them out of this freezing water before they died. And it was kind of this really intense emergency situation. And, you know, and I didn't see Lily at all, but I understood you know, when I woke, that this was over what I was doing in the dream. This is what's happening. And, you know, seeing it symbolic of our life that there are going to be times as a parent when you have a task or another assignment and your child has to wait or watch or truly just learn to depend on the Lord themselves for their comfort. And mommy can't come and just fix it. Even even metaphorically talking about our dream life. You know, another person cannot cleanse your dream life. It's yours. You have to learn to function and rise up in that. And maybe that's even what the dream was about, her learning that to be all right in a place and an operation where other people were busy doing their own things, especially her mom. And young children are very closely tied. If you have a, a a full-time parent, whether it's the mom or dad that's there with them all the time, they're very, you know, they, they're very dependent on that parent, on that person that's there. They're, they're your source of food and comfort and shelter and everything comes from this parent. And for when God began to, you know, at four years old, show her, you need to perhaps not be so dependent on her and learn that you're going to be okay with me. And that's kind of what happened in her dream. He came and sat with her and talked with her. And you can be okay if it's just me. I, I can be your all. And what a lesson to have to be faced with and start learning when you're four. I mean, this is something that very mature Christians we still wrestle with constantly. And just the awe of his, his care and guidance and training up his own and being able to witness that. So at the breakfast table that morning... I sat down and her little brothers had a book of trucks. It was this very, it was just pictures of trucks and the name of the types of trucks. And so I put it on the table next to her, next to her plate of pancakes and asked her to flip through it and say, tell me what was in your dream. And she pointed to the exact same truck. And I had seen that exact same truck in my dream. It was the utility truck that, you know, works on power lines with the bucket and the, you know, little elevator arm that goes up. And... I was amazed to have that detail and to realize that it was the same and that God had done this simple request that I asked, but I had never heard anyone share a testimony of anything like that, that I just had never heard anything like that. And it did, you know, as I began to research, you know, I began to discover, okay, yes, people, People in the new age and people like this, they, they do function in these things. Um, and I did end up meeting Christians who had ministries and dreams and interpreting and and function. And oh, yes, oh, that's very, that can happen. And, and yet again, it, you have to have it all tied in obedience to the Lord and operate in it as he bids, not as you might want to choose on how to do it. And as you grow in things, he'll give you confidence and authority, but you need to always be humble and make sure that you're having a check and accountability and not getting into something that you shouldn't. And I just remember sitting there and so had this very simple conversation with Lily where, okay, there's going to be times in your life where mommy can't be there, where maybe God has me doing something else that's very important that, you know, is to help someone else. And And you need to just be okay with you and God. And he's got you and you're safe. Nothing was hurting you. You were safe and it's okay to sit and wait. And even now that she's in her 20s, she's still going through a season that's very much like that and struggling with. And and even from the beginning, God knows what we need to hear. He knows what we need from him and what we will need from him. So he is faithful to show us those things and teach them. So the, that's the, the story and the spirit behind this painting is Lily learning 
And my, in reflecting of my experience, even as a child, learning my faith was my comfortable teddy bear. And oftentimes our faith can do that. We know Jesus loves us. We know we'll be with him again. And yet we suffer so much in this life because we just accept what the enemy pushes on us and we don't stand up and say no. Very much the example of David and Goliath and so many of the giants of faith in the Bible who stand up and say, no, I know who my God is. I know who he made me to be. I will not suffer this evil in my life, in my dreams, in my home. And and even so early in her childhood, Lily began to operate in this in her dreams. And she was very much like me. She was very sensitive to the spiritual realm. She even to this day sees and experiences things on a level that I don't fully or I might get a glimpse of that, but she sees it fully. And I was so humbled, and I still am, to be asked to be the parent of someone with such gifts. And it has helped me to lean even more on God for his wisdom and guidance in, in all these things to raise her up and teach her and to understand that if I don't have the answer, I can send her to the Lord. I can say, well, you need to go out and talk to God about that yourself and see what he says. And you will be astonished at young children. And if you actually challenge them to operate and have a personal relationship with the Lord, they're so able to do that. And God is so able to communicate to them. That she's come back to me with things, oh, God said this or that, and it, it'll blow you away and grow your faith so much more. As parents, we tend to want to get in there and fix it all ourselves, you know, and that's not what he didn't, he didn't show me how to help her not have bad dreams or see things that would scare her. He showed me what I needed to know to let her know this was okay and that this was from the Lord and that it wasn't supposed to be scary. It was supposed to help her not be scared. And so I just want to encourage you in that, in your walk today, that stay humble before the Lord. And sometimes he might show you things or say things that might scare you and that might shake your confidence a little bit or that might take you outside of your comfort zone or take you away from that thing that you're used to, that you take comfort from. But it's probably just because he wants you to learn to draw closer to him and realize that he's right there with you. And to look at him and not the things that scare you so much. So bless you today. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you stick around for the next video. Bye.